Good evening. Last Sunday, we heard the entire story of Jesus' arrest, trial, and crucifixion. You may have had a chance to see Jesus and his followers enter Jerusalem, where several incredible things happened, including the appearance of crowds, soldiers, judges, a streaker, an arrest, a crucifixion, and a tomb. As Holy Week progresses, we return to different scenes from the week before all of that happened through the lens of a different gospel. If this is your first time hearing these stories, or you are new to the Christian faith and this sounds confusing, please do not be disheartened. There are thousands of years worth of libraries, letters, practices, and customs, and volumes of commentaries about what the stories might really mean. And even so, every year that we tell them, something new is revealed. Tonight, we see Jesus getting up from the supper table and insist on washing the feet of his disciples. But something, or rather someone, is missing. In the center of all of this evening was Judas. The prediction of his betrayal is foretold. If you look at the address of tonight's gospel reading, you will see that we skipped over verses 18 to 31. In the design of this week's retelling of events, those verses were assigned to be read yesterday, the Wednesday in Holy Week. Why? Maybe it was seen as a distraction or an interruption from the central action of the foot washing. Removing Judas from the scene may gloss over a central teaching of Jesus. There's a reason my former bishop and many others hold Monday Thursday foot washing services at shelters and in prisons. Jesus tells his followers to serve one another, but by his actions, he shows that he means, by washing Judas's feet, that we do this for everyone, even if their actions are troubling or you don't understand their role in our life together. History has softened our take on Judas Modern scholarship has translated Judas's actions as handing over rather than betrayal, a distinction you can see between our Eucharistic prayers in Rites 1 and Rite 2. And many new translations do not have Jesus saying, you will betray me, but saying rather, one of you will turn me in. More of a necessity of action than an assignment of blame. It says tonight that it was the devil who planted this idea, either in Judas's heart or his mind, depending on which translation you read. But that doesn't really explain why Judas agreed to do what Jesus told him to go and do, though there has been much speculation over the centuries. Theories include his motivation was political or financial, or maybe Judas underestimated how far the authorities would take things. Perhaps he believed that if they were holding Jesus in jail, he would be protected from the crowds until the festival was over. Or perhaps he was just wishing Jesus would finally stand up and take charge, and maybe this would force his hand. Or we can blame it on the devil, but by now that feels like an easy out. John wrote in the reading from yesterday that none of the others at the table understood why Jesus sent Judas away. Last night's reading says, since Judas had charge of the common fund, some of them thought Jesus was telling him, go and buy what we need for the festival or telling him to give something to the poor. 
As soon as Judas had taken a piece of bread, he went out. Night had fallen. It was Jesus who tells Judas to go and do what he must do. And it was after Judas left that Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. Judas was a faithful disciple, one of the 12 proclaiming this new gospel. He was among those given authority and power to heal the sick and to cast out evil. And he stayed with Jesus for three years. He served alongside the disciples and Jesus as he calmed the storms, healed the sick, fed the multitudes, and brought people back to life. Judas was by his side until this final evening. He was, after all, chosen by Jesus, along with the other 11, to be one of his closest apostles. And the plans Jesus laid out for him, Judas helped set in motion. Nowadays, we get upset or at least a little uncomfortable when people suggest that Jesus is asking us to take action, to go and do something, sometimes as simple as forgiving a grudge, sometimes to stand up against or for poverty, racism, injustice. Oftentimes, when others are doing this, we are quick to wish they would stop, especially when they show up at meals or at meetings or in the middle of an otherwise simple story or an evening service like tonight when we really are just trying to have a moment. They are making things difficult. But these stories given to us over the past thousands of years show us we need them and we need their disruptions to make difficult things happen. And even though God's people are faithful, it is not always easy for them. We sometimes hear the question, how many young girls did the angel have to ask before Mary said yes? Mary, who was also asked to do a hard and unpopular thing. So I wonder if Jesus first asked Peter, his rock, to hand him over to the authorities. Or Thomas, his great believer. Or Matthew, whom he knew was already accustomed to being reviled in the community. They were all there around the table tonight. But when he chose Judas, Judas said yes. And it was Judas walking out in the dark of that night, his feet lovingly toweled dry, swallowing the last bit of bread his beloved teacher would ever bless, break, and share with him. Judas off to do what he must do. Judas is human not a demon, and maybe not even possessed by one. Just like us, he has every chance at redemption. Restoring Judas to the center of this evening's story insists that we do not presume to know or understand the hearts of those Jesus commands us to serve, just that we serve them. I would love to hear your story where you find yourself this evening in Holy Week when God insists on serving all of us, all of us. Where is God's presence in all of humanity confusing for you? And where do you go and make holy trouble? I wonder what choices you face when walking out into the darkness tonight. I wonder if there was ever a time that you believed you were following Jesus, even when you feared that the choice you were about to make 
just might bring everything crashing down. When you come forward tonight to have your feet or your hands washed, I want you to remember Jesus washing even the feet of Judas and to be reminded with great joy that beyond our understanding, God's plans, God's grace, and the wildness of God's mercy covers all of our lives. Let's pray. God, our lives are in your hands, and for that we give you thanks. Amen.